If you're here, it's because you know there's a part of you that isn't allowing you to manifest. And today, I want to teach you exactly how to outsmart this part so you can be free to manifest whatsoever you desire without fear and without working hard for it. Step number one, we need to redefine what this part of you really needs because this is where the root of the problem lies. You believe that it's a part of you that's not letting you manifest when in reality, the first reframe we need to create together is understanding that this part of you is actually a part of the ego. The ego is different from your true self. Your true self is already worthy, perfect, abundant, and eternal. And it understands that there's nothing that needs to resist and to be open to receive. Whilst this part of you, which is the ego, lives in constant fear. This fear is what creates resistance to manifestation. Think about it this way. If you manifest what you desire, you might have a fear of failure, of rejection, of abandonment, so on and so forth. And you believe that this fear is yours. This is not the problem. The problem is identifying with this part of you, believing yourself to be it. So how do we transcend this part that is not you? And how do we get back to the truth? That is all that matters in this video. This is how you really outsmart this part of the ego and you become a chess master. Step number one, you need to realize the futility of this fear. Understand that all fear is literally a fear of separation from the creator, from God, from the universe. So why do you keep believing in fear? At the creative plane, when you think and feel, you can manifest whatsoever you desire. But at the highest level, that desire and that manifestation is not even separate from you. Second thing you need to understand, this eternal true self that you are, it's called the I am, which is everywhere. What God presented itself to Moses in the scripture, he said, I am that I am. So I am simply means God dwelling in the individual. God is dwelling everywhere, just like the quantum field of potential. Everywhere in the universe, inside your thoughts, within and without, there's only the I am. There's only God's intelligence acting there. But you have free will. And people ask me, JP, how come God is everywhere? But then on earth, there is lack, there is scarcity, there is fear. Not only outside there, but also within me. And that fear is the part of me that believes that I'm not ready to receive my manifestations because it's afraid. But let me tell you the truth of the case. You, as a creator, have a responsibility. You have free will. The pure, untainted energy of God, of the universal intelligence, flows into you 24-7, untainted, perfect, with no color. But as it comes into you, you decide through your attention where you're going to direct it. This is where the illusion of duality comes up. This is the challenge. You think that there is good and evil. You think that there is fear and love and that they are opposites. This part of you that is not letting you manifest believes in fear. Because if not, you would be open to manifest. You would be open to receive. But you are holding on to fear because it's familiar, because it's what you've known. And it's unsafe for you to step out of that familiar place. So you might think that your ego is protecting you, but in reality, your ego is keeping you in a prison and you need to break free. You need to know the truth. So how do we get to the truth? We can manifest like we were meant to as the sons and daughters of the creator, as royalty, as having a divine inheritance that is our birthright to manifest. That is our duty and responsibility as creators. So there's fear that's keeping you stuck with the ego, is making you be disconnected from the source of life itself. When you serve the false master of fear, you think that fear has power. Pay very close attention. You have the false self here, and you have your higher true self here, which is love. Love and fear are not meant to live together because they can't. You can't place your attention on both masters. You're either focusing your attention on fear that part of you that is afraid to manifest or you're focused on the truth 
I am inherently worthy. This part of me is not even me. Therefore, I'm ready to claim my full dominion and authority to manifest like a master. But you see just from this example that I can't split my face into two and serve love, the only true master, God, the universe, or self-fear, which is the ego. You can't. You must choose one master. There aren't even two masters because the ego, the fear, the part of you that is keeping you from manifesting is a complete illusion that I'm here to help you shatter forever. Remember that God's energy flows into you. Through your attention, you give life to whatever you place your attention upon. That's the reason why there is scarcity and poverty and these blockages that aren't allowing you to manifest right now. It's not because you have so much power that through your attention and through unconscious habits of your human, you have chosen to serve the false master of fear. Therefore, you manifest more fear and you manifest more blockages that aren't allowing you to manifest. And then it gets even worse because you think that you're that fear, these little voices in your head telling you why you shouldn't be able to manifest, how you're not worthy, how you should doubt yourself. Who do you think you are? Unworthiness, fear, doubt. These are the three main weapons that your ego uses. And if we can stop this madness, we can realize and understand who gave power to the ego, who gave power to the fear. The ego and this part of you that is in allowing you to manifest does not have any self-sustaining power. You, which is the real master, you're the only one who can give life force and energy to anything. That's your responsibility as a creator to so stay with me. We're building up the context and giving you the framework for freedom. The ego, the fear is not powerful on its own. It needs me to give it life force, to give it food for it to feed. It's like an energetic parasite keeping you from manifesting, wants to keep you in fear, wants to keep you in the known, wants to keep you in the familiar. And a beautiful analogy that comes to my awareness is you're trapping yourself in a prison, in a cell that you didn't even know that you actually had the key. Right outside of this prison cell, there's a beautiful treasure of light, jewels, gold, diamonds, abundance, prosperity, everything you've ever wanted to manifest. Because you believe yourself to be the mind, the part of the ego that wants to keep you stuck in fear, you don't move forward towards your wildest dreams, making a bigger impact in the world and serving the people that you're meant to serve. You spend every day, 50, 70, 80% of your day in fear and you wonder, why can't I manifest? It's not because you need to try harder out there. It's because within your own state of being, you haven't identified the root cause of the problem, which is you need to stop misidentifying with the false egoic master. It's as simple as turning your back and understanding that your only responsibility is to serve the truth, is to serve the light, is to serve the universal intelligence of God, the creator that lives within you, which you are. And imagine this by me focusing on my own divinity, on my own perfection, on my own love. I understand that I am inherently worthy to precipitate or manifest whatsoever I desire as long as it does not hurt another of God's children. That is the only golden law. So imagine how much self-imposed limitation you're placing upon yourself right now because you keep believing that you're the separate, small, little me that is unworthy, that is anxious, that is stressed. And because you believe yourself to be that, then you add on top of that another layer of self-shaming, of self-rejection, and then you wonder, why can I not love and accept myself? It's because you don't even know who you are. When you know who you are, you start to love that so much because you understand that you're not both the fear and the love. You're not both the part of the ego that's keeping you from manifesting and your true self that already knows that is inherently worthy to manifest you start to understand that you're only this. And because you place your attention on only this, all the power you had given to the fear starts to fade away. It's as simple as turning your attention, forgetting that this part of you ever existed because that is what keeps you in fear. And you might ask me, isn't that rejecting myself? Isn't that bypassing X, Y, Z? There's a lot of confusion in your mind about this. The truth is, why would you accept something that is not you? something that is not real. This is fear. The only purpose of fear is to help you have the experience of understanding that you were never that, but that you were always love. So this apparent duality is not there for you to be both of them. You can't hold 
both fear and love at the same time. Fear is here so that you understand what the absence of love looks like. And once you understand what the absence of love looks like, you start to transcend into the oneness. You start to focus your attention on inherent worth, peace, purpose. The I am presence that lives within you, your true eternal identity is already perfect, is already divine. You don't become divine. You don't become your higher self. You are your higher self. You are divine. And if you can sit with this realization and pause and contemplate this teaching, you'll understand that there was never anything you needed to prove. You didn't need to create any achievement in your business, career, relationships, or health to prove to yourself that you are now worthy of manifesting. This part of your ego that kept you from manifesting will now magically dissolve because you achieve something outside of yourself. Because the truth is that it won't. Even if you hit a hundred million dollars in revenue, if you were serving 10,000 clients and you're impacting so many lives, if you don't learn how to master fear, how to govern fear and transcend fear, you're always going to be stuck with this limitation without being fully your true powerful self, manifesting miracles, manifesting your greatest desires with ease. So how are you manifesting in your life? Take a moment to reflect upon that. Are you manifesting as your God self, as the creator within, or are you manifesting from the limited human or the ego that you thought you were? This will tell you everything about why you're blocking your own manifestation because it's not you that's blocking the manifestations, but you need to stop identifying with the fear and understand that you're love, my friend. And when you understand that you are only love, you can finally love and accept yourself because you finally stepped away from the confusion of the mind, of the labels, of intellectualizing everything. You can't just feel God. You cannot feel love. You can't feel your inherent mastery and power over reality to bend it, to manifest your greatest desires by intellectualizing and labeling. Part of this lesson is a transmission of truth that you're not meant to conceptualize, but to feel the truth. Because if you start conceptualizing things, what happens is you start to enter the domain and the world of the ego. Again, black and white, fear and love. This is wrong, this is right. And then you're back in the prison. So as soon as you start intellectualizing things, believing that part of you that's blocking you from manifesting, you're back in your own prison cell. And remember this analogy, because it's really funny. You walk into that prison cell, you lock the door and you think it's something outside of you that's locking the door, but it's you. And then all of the beautiful manifestations are actually right in front of you because it's all a matter of choice. You can set aside all of this fear that you thought you were, all of these insecurities that you judge yourself for, and that you can say to this part of your ego, I do not accept you anymore. This is not who I am. When you understand who you are not, you have instant clarity on who you truly are. And understand this, my friend, when you start to love and accept your true eternal self, which is within you and acting everywhere within you and outside of you, you start to build up this worthiness, confidence, where those confidence and worthiness come from. It's not by doing, it's by recognizing who I am. So when you tell me there's a part of me that's blocking me from manifesting, what you're really telling me is I still don't know who I am. And this is the core root issue that you need to practice day in and day out. Because if you're able to master this, wouldn't it be worth it to spend a few weeks, a few months making this the top priority of your life? Let me tell you the truth. There's nothing more important than this work that we are talking about right now. There isn't. Contemplate for a moment how important this is. Beautiful matcha here. Because we're talking about your own perception of yourself and the world around you. So you want to manifest wealth. You want to manifest conscious relationships. You want to manifest impact, purpose, service to humanity. Stop serving the false master of fear. Stop believing that it's a part of you that's blocking your manifestations. That is a complete falsehood that I want to shatter. So why must you continue to believe and give reality to something that is not real? Remember that throughout the universe, throughout your own body, there's only one intelligence, one power, and one presence active, and that is you. 
this is very deep. And what I'm about to do with you is I'm going to read a revelation that I had that I want to share with you. I want you to really pay attention to how you have the opportunity right now to completely dissolve and shatter fear. If you get this, you awaken the God frequency within. You awaken your mastery. There's nothing or no one that can ever stop you except yourself. So listen very carefully. Rule number three, tap in. There is nothing to fear. There is nothing to fear because I am that which I've been seeking. Here, I am is in all caps. There is only one power, one presence, one intelligence acting in my world, and I am it. How can there be doubt when I know that I am the only power operating everywhere through manifestation channels, through business, through everyone in this world? I'm the only power operating there. Use this to shatter the illusion of doubt, fear, and separation. Fear is to believe in separation. They are not real. P.S. I'm reading. I am is not JP, meaning me, or my personality speaking, but the divine presence of God within me. I am is the recognition of our true, eternal, perfect identity. That is what it means to say I am. Understand that when I say I am, it is not me speaking, it is not you speaking. It's the divine, perfect, eternal presence that lives within you, that you are. How can you have any trace of unworthiness, of fear, or doubt when you know that you are everything you want to be? Contemplate deeply on this. You do not need to wait for an external manifestation in order to recognize this inherent, divine, perfect worth. There is nothing to fear because I am that which I've been seeking. There is nothing to fear because God in me is that which I've been seeking. There is only one power, one presence, and one intelligence acting throughout the universe. And I am it. And I am is that recognition of our true eternal nature and understanding that just as scientists have proof that there is an intelligent quantum field that connects everything in the universe and that at the deepest subatomic level, there is only energy. There is empty space. We understand if you're able to let go of previous religious indoctrination that I am is that quantum field, that I am is you, but you are the whole itself. And at your command, through your free will, you have the power to consciously command this energy through your conscious thought and feeling to manifest whatsoever you desire. This whole entire grid of energy is waiting for the master to awaken. And that master, my friends, is you. Do not take this transmission for granted. Show up for yourself. This is a permanent shift in your consciousness to live more and more every single day as the God presence within, as God within you. Because when you truly know who you are, do you think that God's children live in fear? Do you think that God's children are afraid to manifest? No, my friends, they manifest as masters. They live a life where they are fearless and there's nothing else to it. So when fear comes knocking on your door, you can simply say, no, you're not welcome here. I'm the master within, governing and controlling all of my thought processes in full Christ perfection as I wish them to be. I'm going to give you a very simple framework to apply this in your own life today. So what is step number one? What we just went over recognize know thyself know thyself and hold that knowing even when fear wants to knock on your door step number two realize how laughable the illusion of fear is how can there be fear when i am acting everywhere how can there be fear when i am here and i am there in my clients in my future clients in my bank account in my business and money in anything that i want to manifest i am that already i am not separate from my desires and my manifestations i am one with them and I am the source, the root cause of that creation that will manifest. This is how you need to start being. This goes beyond workshops and strategies. This is the real deal. When you achieve this mastery, you achieve it in a permanent way. We do this by daily conscious practice. First, remember who we are. Pillar number one, know thyself. Pillar number two, hold a knowing of who you are and understand the laughable illusion of fear. That is not real. Fear is literally believing in separation. There is no separation. There's just the illusion of separation. And that is way different. You 
need to break free from the veil. This is the veil, is the illusion of separation. And step number three, as you remember and hold the knowing of who you are, you are transcending the limited human identity and you're stepping into your own limited, divine, perfect, eternal identity. And as you're in that identity, I want you to decree. This is not journaling or doing inner work and shadow work and loving everything that comes your way. You're using your authority as God within you and you're commanding silence of fear because fear is not you. How do we do it? Very simple. I'm going to give you the simplest decree that you say. You start by saying, I am a master within. Imagine that you're speaking to the fear that could come in as a thought or as a feeling or as a physical contraction. Practice conscious breathing, cultivate your presence. And as you're aware that the ego is knocking on your door, instead of allowing it to come into your house of wholeness and corrupt it with fear, you want to be like a bouncer outside of an important party. And you're there as the bouncer and you say, no, 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 my friend, you're, you can't come in. You're not going to take over this entire club. I'm not going to allow you, but you need to build up that confidence and the power. And the way that you do this is by proving it to yourself. How? By simply saying, I am. Understanding that means God in me is. You say, I am a master within, governing and controlling all of my thought processes in a full perfection as I wish them to be. You, fear, be gone. You're not welcomed here and you shall no longer influence any area of my life. It is done now. I commanded something along those lines. And I want you to repeat this third part, this decree again and again in real time. So you don't allow the buildup of fear to take over. As soon as you feel any disturbance in your field, you're going to say that decree. And you will understand that as you practice these three steps, you're going to be a master of manifestation. And you're going to completely, not only outsmart that part of you, but completely govern it and transcend it as a whole. Peace. Go and apply this and I'll see you on the next one.